Current Unix time 1641693099 Unix time past 1 billion seconds on 2010909 to 1 colon 46 colon 40z. It was celebrated in Copenhagen, Denmark at a party held by Kuug. Unix time is a system for describing a point in time. It is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the Unix epoch, excluding leap seconds. The Unix epoch is 0 o'clock UTC on January 1, 1970. Unix time is nonlinear with a leap second having the same Unix time as the second before it, so that every day is treated as if it contains exactly 86,400 seconds. With no seconds added to or subtracted from the day as a result of positive or negative leap seconds. Due to this treatment of leap seconds, Unix time is not a true representation of UK. Unix time is widely used in operating systems and file formats. In Unix-like operating systems, date is a command which will print or set the current time, by default, it prints or sets the time in the system time zone, but with the U flag. It prints or sets the time in UTGEN, with the TZ environment variable set to refer to a particular time zone, prints or sets the time in that time zone. Two layers of encoding make up Unix time. The first layer encodes a point in time as a scalar real number which represents the number of seconds that have passed since 0 o'clock UTC Thursday January 1, 1970. The second layer encodes that number as a sequence of bits or decimal digits. As is standard with UK, this article labels days using the Gregorian calendar, and counts times within each day in hours, minutes, and seconds. Some of the examples also show International Atomic Time, another time scheme which uses the same seconds and is displayed in the same format as UK. But in which every day is exactly 86,400 seconds long, gradually losing synchronization with the Earth's rotation at a rate of roughly one second per year. Unix time is a single sign number that increments every second, which makes it easier for computers to store and manipulate than conventional date systems. Interpreter programs can then convert it to a human-readable format. The Unix epoch is the time 0 o'clock UTC on January 1, 1970. There is a problem with this definition, in that UT did not exist in its current form until 1972, this issue is discussed below. For brevity, the remainder of this section uses ISO 8601 date and time format, in which the Unix epoch is 1970-0101-T00-00-Z. Colon colon the Unix time number is zero at the Unix epoch, and increases by exactly 86,400 per day since the epoch. Thus 2004-09-16-T00-00-00-Z, 12,677 days after the epoch, is represented by the Unix time number 12,677 times 86,400 equals 1,095,292,800. This can be extended backwards from the epoch too, using negative numbers, thus 1957-1004-T00-00-00-Z, 4,472 days before the epoch, is represented by the Unix time number minus 4,472 times 86,400 equals minus 386,380,800. This applies within days as well. The time number at any given time of a day is the number of seconds that has passed since the midnight starting that day added to the time number of that midnight. Unix time is sometimes, mistakenly, referred to as epoch time, because Unix time is based on an epoch, and because of a common misunderstanding that the Unix epoch is the only epoch. The above scheme means that on a normal UT day, which has a duration of 86,400 seconds, the Unix time number changes in a continuous manner across midnight. For example, at the end of the day used in the examples above, the time representations progress as follows, when a leap second occurs, the UK day is not exactly 86,400 seconds long and the Unix time number experiences a discontinuity. Leap seconds may be positive or negative. No negative leap second has ever been declared. But if one were to be, then at the end of a day with a negative leap second, the Unix time number would jump up by 1 to the start of the next day. During a positive leap second at the end of a day, which occurs about every year and a half on average, the Unix time number increases continuously. Into the next day during the leap second and then at the end of the leap second jumps back by 1. For example, this is what happened on strictly conforming POSIX.1 systems at the end of 1998, Unix time numbers are repeated in the second immediately following a positive leap second. The Unix time number 1,483,142,400 is thus ambiguous, it can refer either to start of the leap second or the end of it, 
one second later. In the theoretical case when a negative leap second occurs, no ambiguity is caused, but instead there is a range of Unix time numbers that do not refer to any point in UT time at all. A Unix clock is often implemented with a different type of positive leap second handling associated with the network time protocol. This yields a system that does not conform to the POSIX standard. See the section below concerning NTP for details. When dealing with periods that do not encompass a UT leap second, the difference between two Unix time numbers is equal to the duration in seconds of the period between the corresponding points in time. This is a common computational technique. However, where leap seconds occur, such calculations give the wrong answer. In applications where this level of accuracy is required, it is necessary to consult a table of leap seconds when dealing with Unix times, and it is often preferable to use a different time encoding that does not suffer from this problem. A Unix time number is easily converted back into a UT time by taking the quotient and modulus of the Unix time number, modulo 86400. The quotient is the number of days since the epoch, and the modulus is the number of seconds since midnight UK on that day. If given a Unix time number that is ambiguous due to a positive leap second, this algorithm interprets it as the time just after midnight. It never generates a time that is during a leap second. If given a Unix time number that is invalid due to a negative leap second, it generates an equally invalid UT time. If these conditions are significant, it is necessary to consult a table of leap seconds to detect them. Non-synchronous network time protocol-based variant commonly a MIL-style Unix clock is implemented with leap second handling not synchronous with the change of the Unix time number. The time number initially decreases where a leap should have occurred, and then it leaps to the correct time one second after the leap. This makes implementation easier, and is described by Mill's paper. This is what happens across a positive leap second, this can be decoded properly by paying attention to the leap second state variable, which unambiguously indicates whether the leap has been performed yet. The state variable change is synchronous with the leap. A similar situation arises with a negative leap second, where the second that is skipped is slightly too late. Very briefly the system shows a nominally impossible time number, but this can be detected by the time underscore del state and corrected. In this type of system the Unix time number violates POSIX around both types of leap second. Collecting the leap second state variable along with the time number allows for unambiguous decoding, so the correct POSIX time number can be generated if desired, or the full at time can be stored in a more suitable format. The decoding logic required to cope with this style of Unix clock would also correctly decode a hypothetical POSIX conforming clock using the same interface. This would be achieved by indicating the time underscore INS state during the entirety of an inserted leap second, then indicating time underscore wait during the entirety of the following second while repeating the seconds count. This requires synchronous leap second handling. This is probably the best way to express UT time in Unix clock form, via a Unix interface, when the underlying clock is fundamentally untroubled by leap seconds. Tie-based variant another, much rarer, non-conforming variant of Unix timekeeping involves encoding tie rather than UK. Some Linux systems are configured this way. Because tie has no leap seconds, and every tie day is exactly 86,400 seconds long, this encoding is actually a pure linear count of seconds elapsed since 1971.01 t 00 tie. This makes time interval arithmetic much easier. Time values from these systems do not suffer the ambiguity that strictly conforming POSIX systems or NTP-driven systems have. In these systems it is necessary to consult a table of leap seconds to correctly convert between UK and the pseudo-UNIX time representation. This resembles the manner in which time zone tables must be consulted to convert to and from civil time. The IANA time zone database includes leap second information and the sample code available from the same source uses that information to convert between tie base time stamps and local time. Conversion also runs into definitional problems prior to the 1972 commencement of the current form of UK. This tie based system, despite its superficial resemblance, is not Unix time. It encodes times with values that differ by several seconds from the POSIX time values. A version of this system was proposed for inclusion in ISOC's time. H but only the UT part was accepted in 2011. A tie underscore clock does, however, exist in C++20. A Unix time number can be represented in any form capable of representing numbers. In some applications the number is simply represented textually as a string of decimal digits, raising only trivial additional problems. However, 
certain binary representations of Unix times are particularly significant. The Unix time underscore t data type that represents a point in time is, on many platforms, a signed integer, traditionally of 32 bits, directly encoding the Unix time number as described in the preceding section. Being 32 bits means that it covers a range of about 136 years in total. The minimum representable date is Friday, December 13, 1901, and the maximum representable date is Tuesday, January 19, 2038. One second after 3.14 and 7 seconds UTC January 19, 2038 this representation will overflow in what is known as the year 2038 problem. In some newer operating systems, time underscore T has been widened to 64 bits. This expands the times representable by approximately 292 billion years in both directions, which is over 20 times the present age of the universe per direction. There was originally some controversy over whether the Unix time underscore T should be signed or unsigned. If unsigned, its range in the future would be doubled, postponing the 32-bit overflow. However, it would then be incapable of representing times prior to the epoch. The consensus is for time underscore t to be signed, and this is the usual practice. The software development platform for version 6 of the QNX operating system has an unsigned 32-bit time underscore t, though older releases used a signed type. The POSIX and Open Group Unix specifications include the C standard library, which includes the time types and functions defined in the header file. The ISO C standard states that time underscore T must be an arithmetic type, but does not mandate any specific type or encoding for it. POSIX requires time underscore T to be an integer type, but does not mandate that it be signed or unsigned. Unix has no tradition of directly representing non-integer Unix time numbers as binary fractions. Instead, Times with sub-second precision are represented using composite data types that consist of two integers, the first being a time underscore t, and the second being the fractional part of the time number in millionths or billionths. These structures provide a decimal-based fixed-point data format, which is useful for some applications and trivial to convert for others. The present form of UC, with leap seconds, is defined only starting from January 1, 1972. Prior to that, since January 1, 1961 there was an older form of UK in which not only were there occasional time steps, which were by non-integer numbers of seconds, but also the UK second was slightly longer than the SI second, and periodically changed to continuously approximate the Earth's rotation. Prior to 1961 there was no UK, and prior to 1958 there was no widespread atomic timekeeping. In these eras, some approximation of GMT was used instead of an atomic time scale. The precise definition of Unix time as an encoding of UTK is only uncontroversial when applied to the present form of UTK. The Unix epoch predating the start of this form of UTK does not affect its use in this era. The number of days from January 1, 1970 to January 1, 1972 is not in question. And the number of days is all that is significant to Unix time. The meaning of Unix time values below plus 63,072,000 is not precisely defined. The basis of such Unix times is best understood to be an unspecified approximation of UK. Computers of that era rarely had clocks set sufficiently accurately to provide meaningful sub-second timestamps in any case. Unix time is not a suitable way to represent times prior to 1972 in applications requiring sub-second precision. Such applications must, at least, define which form of UT or GMT they use. As of 2009, the possibility of ending the use of leap seconds in civil time is being considered. A likely means to execute this change is to define a new time scale, called international time, that initially matches UK but thereafter has no leap seconds. Thus remaining at a constant offset from TI. If this happens, it is likely that Unix time will be prospectively defined in terms of this new time scale. Instead of UK. Uncertainty about whether this will occur makes prospective Unix time no less predictable than it already is, if UK were simply to have no further leap seconds the result would be the same. The earliest versions of Unix time had a 32-bit integer incrementing at a rate of 60 Hz, which was the rate of the system clock on the hardware of the early Unix systems. The value 60 Hz still appears in some software interfaces as a result. The epoch also differed from the current value. The first edition Unix programmer's manual dated November 3, 1971 defines the Unix time as the time since 0 o'clock, January 1, 1971, measured in 60ths of a second. The user manual also commented that the chronologically minded user will note that 232 60ths of a second is only about 2.5 years. 
Because of this limited range, the epic was redefined more than once, before the rate was changed to 1 Hz and the epic was set to its present value of January 1, 1970 0 o'clock UTC. This yielded a range of about 136 years. Half of it before 1970 and half of it afterwards. As indicated by the definition quoted above, the Unix timescale was originally intended to be a simple linear representation of time elapsed since an epoch. However, there was no consideration of the details of time scales, and it was implicitly assumed that there was a simple linear time scale already available and agreed upon. The first edition manual's definition does not even specify which time zone is used. Several later problems, including the complexity of the present definition, result from Unix time having been defined gradually by usage rather than fully defined from the outset. When POSIX.1 was written, the question arose of how to precisely define time underscore t in the face of leap seconds. The POSIX committee considered whether Unix time should remain, as intended, a linear count of seconds since the epoch, at the expense of complexity in conversions with civil time or a representation of civil time. At the expense of inconsistency around leap seconds. Computer clocks of the era were not sufficiently precisely set to form a precedent one way or the other. The POSIX committee was swayed by arguments against complexity in the library functions, and firmly defined the Unix time in a simple manner in terms of the elements of UT time. This definition was so simple that it did not even encompass the entire leap year rule of the Gregorian calendar, and would make 2100 a leap year. The 2001 edition of POSIX.1 rectified the faulty leap year rule in the definition of Unix time, but retained the essential definition of Unix time as an encoding of UK rather than a linear time scale. Since the mid-1990s, computer clocks have been routinely set with sufficient precision for this to matter, and they have most commonly been set using the uk based definition of Unix time. This has resulted in considerable complexity in Unix implementations, and in the network time protocol to execute steps in the Unix time number whenever leap seconds occur. Unix enthusiasts have a history of holding time underscore t parties to celebrate significant values of the Unix time number. These are directly analogous to the new year celebrations that occur at the change of year in many calendars. As the use of Unix time has spread, so has the practice of celebrating its milestones. Usually it is time values that are round numbers in decimal that are celebrated, following the Unix convention of viewing time underscore t values in decimal. Among some groups round binary numbers are also celebrated, such as plus 230 which occurred at 1337 and 4 seconds up on Saturday January 10, 2004. The events that these celebrate are typically described as n seconds since the Unix epoch, but this is inaccurate, as discussed above, due to the handling. Of leap seconds in Unix time the number of seconds elapsed since the Unix epoch is slightly greater than the Unix time number for times later than the epoch. Werner Vinge's novel A Deepness in the Sky describes a spacefaring trading civilization thousands of years in the future that still uses the Unix epoch. The programmer archaeologist responsible for finding and maintaining usable code in mature computer systems first believes that the epoch refers to the time when man first walked on the moon. But then realizes that it is the zero second of one of humankind's first computer operating systems. Thanks for watching.